Thanks very much. Um, I'm very conscious that unlike the vast majority of speakers today, um, you probably have never heard of my company unless you are one of the 20% of the UK that takes your phone and broadband services from us. Um, we are a very young business. We um, began life only six years ago. Um, I suspect I'm also one of the people in the room with the least amount of telecoms experience, as I've only spent two years in the industry. Um, that is not unusual within TalkTalk. Talk. Generally, we are a team of people that have come together from a variety of different backgrounds to build an alternative phone and broadband business. And in the course of six years, we've gone from no customers to five million customers. That comes with its challenges, that sort of rapid growth as well. Um, but we try to do things slightly differently. Um, and I want to talk to you a bit about, as Liv and BT Openreach build out the infrastructure of superfast broadband in the UK, how we actually have people use it. Um, because I don't think it is uh, a slam dunk that if you build it, they will come. Um, in fact, the opposite is true. Um, and what you need to make sure is that there is real innovation um, to drive take up and use of the fantastic network that OpenReach are busy building. So I'm going to start by talking a little about, a bit about our current broadband network in the UK. Our, our government has set um, a target to have the best superfast broadband network in Europe by 2015. Um, the good news is that we already have the best broadband network in Europe. Um, particularly if you look at a balanced scorecard measure of what best means. So the Chancellor last autumn in his autumn statement set out how the government intends to measure uh, what the best superfast broadband network is. Uh, clearly speed, average speed is one of those measures but um, he also intends to measure take up, um, choice and price. And if you look at the broadband market in the UK today, I've taken two on this slide. It shows you firstly a, a, a picture of the choice available to British consumers um, for broadband provision compared to other countries in the world. And we have one of the most competitive markets for broadband provision in the, in the whole of the world. In fact, it was impossible to get uh, on the slide a picture for the USA because there are so many different broadband providers in the USA because each of them has a geographic monopoly. So if you look, I've taken rather cheekily Rhode Island because it was the only state I could actually get the data for um, because in ev virtually every other part of the US, consumers and businesses have no choice over who they buy their broadband from. Whereas if you look in the UK, the vast majority of people in the UK have a wide choice four big operators, of which TalkTalk Talk is one, but also BT, Sky and Virgin, and still a number of relatively small operators, which are not, none of us are geographically defined. So consumers, 93% of the UK can access my network, and they can access virtually the same percentage can access BT, Sky and, and Virgin. So huge competition in the UK. What that has driven is some of the lowest prices for phone and broadband in the world. Um, so you can see, again, I've picked a few countries, you can see that relative to the US, UK consumers are paying half for their access to phone and broadband. Um, what that is driving is take up. So if you look at the percentage of households that have a broadband connection at home, um, France is also doing well, but the UK, again, significantly higher take up than in countries where the end consumer is paying more and has very little choice. So I don't think it's a coincidence that UK consumers spend more online. I think it's because they have the choice, they can afford to get online, and there is tremendous innovation and creativity around it. Um, but there is a but. Despite the fantastic innovation of superfast broadband, very few UK consumers are actually choosing to use it yet. So if you look at the take-up of superfast services, it is available today in one way or another to approximately 60% of the population, but only 6.6% actually choose to take it today. One really scary statistic, and uh, unlike the other speakers, I'm going to bombard you with stats. Um, Northern Ireland has the most advanced rollout of superfast broadband services in, in the UK. About 90% of the population of Northern Ireland could access superfast broadband if they chose to. Northern Ireland also has the highest proportion of dig digitally excluded adults in the UK. 
24% of adults in Northern Ireland have never used the internet. So it is, you cannot assume that because we build the network, you just automatically will build a hugely energised digital nation. We actually have to do something about it. So one of the things we can do about it is understand what actually drives bandwidth and how we get people excited about joining the digital world. Um, the single biggest driver of our of speed requirements is the live downloading of digital pictures. So this chart just shows you how much you need in terms of broadband speed to do various things. So you need very, very little to send an email. Um, you actually, surprisingly, don't need a huge amount to use Skype. What is hugely bandwidth hungry is live streaming of high definition TV pictures. So you can see um, at the bottom I've put the average UK broadband speed to somewhere between seven and eight meg. So without super fast broadband today, if you've only got one device in your home, um, actually the majority of, of, of the UK could watch live streamed HD or the amazing things that Mark Thompson showed us this morning on the BBC Sports website they could use if of course you only had one device. Now my customers are at the value for money end of the UK market and they have, on average, seven devices connected to their home broadband connection within a month, which is amazing when you think about it. You could imagine everyone in this room would have multiple devices connected. But if you think, you know, Middle England, you know, value for money customers, on average, seven devices within a month. So multiple devices, live streaming video pictures, drive demand for bandwidth. We also think uh, that um, access to great live TV will drive demand for broadband connections. It works that way around too. Um, there are five million adults that live in households today without a broadband connection in the UK. So with every, every time one of us in the industry says this is an essential service, we need to remember that there are still five million households that don't have it. Five million households that don't have what we all take for granted as essential to doing our, our, our daily business. There is a lot of research that shows that access to better value for money, TV pictures, via your broadband connection, will start some of those households on their digital journey. So they'll get a broadband connection into their home in order to get cheap TV, and then they'll connect their phone to it, and they might save up enough money to buy their first tablet or their first PC. So what I'm going to spend the rest of my time talking about is a um, joint venture that a number of us in the UK are involved in to bring exactly that, value for money, TV on demand, to the vast majority of the UK. Um, it's called UView. Mark Thompson mentioned it um, in his keynote speech this morning. Um, UView is a joint venture between all of the public service broadcasters in the UK, so BBC, ITV, Channel 4 and Channel 5. Um, two other joint venture partners are two competing internet service providers, TalkTalk Talk and BT, and Arkiva, who own the DTT transmission network in the UK. So we are an unlikely group of bedfellows, all seven of us. It has to be said that the monthly UView CEOs meetings are my most extraordinary one hour of every month, chaired by TV personality and serial entrepreneur Alan Sugar. One day we will all write a book about them. Uh, but the, the UView itself aims to do something truly extraordinary, which is to make um, linear live TV completely and seamlessly integrated with catch-up. TV, so that the end consumer doesn't need to know which technology is delivering it. They are simply able to watch what they want to watch when they want to watch it. And we do think that although none of the content is new, and the idea of catch-up TV isn't new, what is new is a really seamless and easy interface that consumers will use. And I think it, when you look in the technology space around the world, Actually, the things that transform our sector are things that are simple and easy for end users to use rather than necessarily the underlying technology underneath. So I'm going to show you just a few screenshots of UView to give you a sense. Um, this is the UView program guide. Um, at the moment, if you look at this slide, you know, it's sort of so far so ordinary. Um, you can see channels and all of the normal free view channels, there are 70 odd of them in the UK, would go down the screen if you were to page down. 
and you can go forward and you can press record in order to record something onto your PVR later on uh, when it plays out. Um, it's quite pretty, we think it's quite clean and simple, but it's not particularly um, unique. What is unique is if you look right to the top, up here, to the timeline. The timeline goes forward seven days, but it also goes back seven days. So with one click of a button, I can go back three days in this chart, back from Thursday to Monday, um, and see what was on all of these 70 channels on Monday. And if I want to watch it, I just press play. So every one of these programs where you can see the play icon, um, the channel owns the catch-up rights, and you can just press play and watch it without having had to record it in advance. Completely integrated, you can just go up and down and backwards and forwards. Really simple, really easy. Um, and we think that that will genuinely revolutionize people's access. When you have it in your home, as I've had for the last two months, um, it's as if all of that catch-up is just pl playing live now. And you start to think of the, the backwards program guide as just an extension of the live program guide. The next thing it can do is you can search, and you can search seamlessly between both live and catch-up content. So um, when these screenshots were put together, someone was clearly enjoying themselves watching the open golf. So you can see, um, Alex who did it is giggling, because she plainly was. Um, you can see you've got your TV, whatever you were watching, live or catch up, is just playing out. And the search bar comes up in the bottom here. Um, and um, we've typed in uh, a program. We're looking for Emmerdale. It's a smart search function um, that we're all very used to. So we get through the first three letters, E-M-M, -M, and up starts to come any programs, live or catch up, that fits with it. And it's listed in order of popularity. So Emmerdale is a big hitting UK show, so it comes up first. So then we click on Emmerdale, and up comes every piece of Emmerdale content that is anywhere in the UView ecosystem. So you can see on here, there are 23 episodes of Emmerdale that you could watch. Um, the, the, the 23rd of those could well be playing live at this moment, and the other 22 are on catch up. And there's also one of the Emmerdale stars has been on um, Midweek, a BBC program. And because this doesn't just search on the program title, it uses the metadata, that has come up as something to do with Emmerdale as well. Um, so you can then choose which of those programs you want to watch. It's just one click to press play. And as the end user, you, just, you don't need to know which platform, which technology is delivering that. It's all completely integrated. Um, you can also pay for content. I should say that everything I've showed you up to now on UView is completely free. Um, but there is a seamless integration of both pay and free. So this is a series of um, films that you could watch. So um, Alex had gone into On Demand, picked drama. You can see um, by category at the bottom. And this is a selection it would screen across if we had it live of films that are currently loaded on UView in any different part of the, the system. And you can see they come from different providers. So there are a series of Talk Talk films, um, but there's also a BBC film, a Channel 5 film, um, an ITV. Um, there'll be some, some, demand, some, um, some demand for programs as well. All the way um, integrated, customer doesn't need to care where they come from, and they just press play to decide whether they want to watch them. And as we are in this extraordinary British institution, obviously the right film to choose to watch was The Iron Lady. So we pressed play on The Iron Lady, and this is actually a Talk Talk pay per view program. So you don't need to have any subscription with Talk Talk, but if you want to pay to watch this, it's £3.49, and you can just press watch now, and it will play out for you. So completely integrated pay and free. Um, we think that this is hugely disruptive for the UK um, pay TV market and also very exciting for content owners. So what you've got on this slide is a segmentation of the pay TV market in the UK. There are on the right hand side over here 7 million or so pay TV lovers who today are very, very happy, Sky and Virgin customers, paying a chunk of money for some fantastic pay TV. Um, those are not the people that UView is targeted at. There are a few people, I'm afraid, in the UK who don't want to watch any more TV, active rejectors, 
um, of, the pro of, the, of the product, don't want any more television than they've already got or might not even have a TV set, just simply not interested. Clearly, they're not the target market either. But there is a huge mass market of people who would love to have access to particular bits of content but can't afford or don't want to spend um, on an expensive satellite or cable subscription. And for you view, and talk talk clearly that's in our space, we see that as a very exciting opportunity. Um, it is also a very exciting opportunity for our partners in this, BT Retail, and for a whole raft of content owners. UView is an open access platform, so any ISP that wishes to join it is able to, any content owner that wishes to put their content on the platform can at much more affordable rates because the nature of the broadband technology makes the cost of carriage much, much lower than in satellite, for example. So we're quite excited that over time, um, UView will become a marketplace for content, both big um, blockbuster content provided by Sky or by Amazon, um, but also niche content. Whereas we build a base of, of customers that have these boxes in their homes, niche content owners will be able to very cheaply access their customers wherever they are in the UK and give them a genuine TV quality viewing experience. So my role in this and TalkTalk's role in this is to build scale and build scale quickly. And our research around um, the rest of the world tells us that the most important thing you can do in building these sorts of platforms is get a lot of people on the platform quickly. And you do that, there are, I'm told, only three effective marketing words that work globally. Um, one is free, the other is new, and the third is sex. Um, we're only using free, don't need to use the other two. Um, it's very much what we've done in the phone and broadband market as well, and that's why the UK has such high penetration of broadband at such low prices with so much competition, and we intend to do the same thing on TV. So we will be giving a free UView set-top box at no extra cost uh, on top of your existing phone and broadband subscription to all of our premium customers. Um, we've just started pre-registration. And um, for that, you genuinely get access to all of this catch-up content. And we think it will, over time, be something that the vast majority of our customer base take. Um, and in that process, we think we will genuinely, you know, quite a big claim on the top of the slide, democratize TV make it much, much easier for content owners and customers to connect with each other um, using a technology that undoubtedly is a lower cost and more effective way of delivering TV quality images into people's homes. So I think as you do that, that is what will ultimately drive the take-up for superfast broadband. Um, clearly, I'm showing you my innovation, but I think if there's one final point I'd want to leave you with is that what we have in the UK is one of the most competitive markets for phone and broadband. We need to treasure that and make sure that as we make the shift into superfast technology, we keep that competitiveness, we keep driving the innovation, so that the various different parties in the market are encouraged to take some risks and do something different. And by having a breadth of different providers for consumers and businesses to take their services from, I'm certain that Sky, who I know are in the room, are going to do something fantastic to counter this. Um, and that is what makes for a hugely innovative sector um, that hopefully gives us an opportunity to truly be the, the world's first digitally connected nation and to get to that 100% broadband penetration that would transform the way the UK does business. Thanks very much.